In this video, I'm gonna to react to eight things I probably don't know about NASCAR. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. This is the place where I react to music, media, sports, anime, anything related to popular culture. I'll watch it with an open mind and give you my 100% honest reaction to it. And if you could please hit that like button early, I'd really, really appreciate it. So this has been a really, really highly recommended video just because I'm someone who has watched Formula One for quite a long time, followed the sport quite a long time, but has only recently started following NASCAR. Um, I reacted to my first NASCAR video. So the first video NASCAR that I reacted to was my very first bit of exposure to the sport. So I think I've picked up quite a few bits and bobs about the sport, but I think this is gonna really help me sort of build my knowledge base in conjunction with the comments that a lot of um, people have been leaving in the comment sections, which I'm super grateful for. I think this is gonna be a sort of more comprehensive education into the sport. So yeah, I've, I've been really, really enjoying reacting to NASCAR. It's really impressive how fast the cars can go, the engineering involved in keeping the drivers safe. I remember the um, worst crashes in NASCAR history video that I reacted to. I assumed that multiple casualties took place in that video. It's, there was one um, particular one where the truck um, I can't remember the guy's name, but the truck crashed into the fencing, took half the fence down, the whole front end of the truck just tore off, then the car burst into flames. I, I, was, um, I was convinced the guy had died, but then somebody told me that I think he was back on the grid the following race. <laughs> It's just it's just incredible but yeah anyway enough rambling from me this is going to be eight things that i probably don't know about nascar let's go over time i've noticed that a good chunk of my subscribers have either never watched a nascar race or have just started getting into the sport and with the quarantine <laughs> finally being partially lifted this week and NASCAR being the first American sport to resume competition, albeit with no fans in attendance. There's going to be an influx of new viewers checking into NASCAR for the first time, mm. so I thought it might be a good idea to explain what exactly the hell is going on here for newcomers. <laughs> NASCAR is actually a lot like baseball or golf. The more you know about it, the more interesting it becomes, mm. but the less you know about it, the more ridiculous it seems. So with information <laughs> at a premium, here are eight things that you probably didn't know about NASCAR. First off, NASCAR was started by state and federal criminals. Although NASCAR's what? founder Bill France was never a rum runner himself, NASCAR's early rosters from the late 40s and early 50s were filled with convicts and guys who just never got caught. Oh, Before wow. and after Prohibition, intoxicating spirits were banned outright in several states in the southeast. So enterprising young men throughout the South souped up their hot rods so they could outrun the cops when they were on one of their nightly oh. runs. Eventually, local legends grew, and people wanted to know which of their local bootleggers was the best driver. And so tracks and competitions were organized, and at some point somebody had the bright idea to start selling tickets to these get-togethers, and stock car racing was born. Bill France, a Daytona Beach resident and businessman, as well as a former race car driver himself, saw the growing interest and established the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. It's just crazy NASCAR. how things the rest can be was born. History. While many NASCAR like stars that. had their fair share of run-ins with the law, there was none more famous than the last American hero himself, Junior Johnson. A 50-time winner in NASCAR's top series, Junior Johnson was arrested by federal revenuers in 1956 mm. when he went to fire up his father's still one night. He spent one year in federal prison and was eventually pardoned by President Ronald Reagan Dang. years later, although he had begun the appeal process under the Carter administration. But in true bootlegger fashion, if you ever brought this up to Junior while he was still alive, he'd be quick to remind you that he never got caught behind the wheel while he was making one of his runs. <laughs> Junior gained a reputation on the track for being a tough-as-nails driver and an innovative mechanic. So innovative, in fact, that he is widely regarded as one of the most cheatingest figures in all of NASCAR. Cheating. And that gets me to number two on this list. <laughs> cheating is not only tolerated by NASCAR fans, but is actually celebrated. I know this comes as a shocker and is what? at odds with every other sport in existence, but hear me out. Although the sanctioning body of NASCAR is very stringent with its rules, NASCAR fans have always turned a blind eye to cheaters in the sport and actually sing their praises amongst themselves. Teams are allowed to either build their own cars or purchase them from other teams. Mm. And even though NASCAR has strict specifications that those cars have to adhere to, there's always a little wiggle room left to exploit. There's an old saying in NASCAR, if you ain't cheating, then you ain't winning. Everybody does it, although they're usually <laughs> bending the rules or just breaking a rule before it's on the books. Junior Johnson was so prolific in the art of rule dodging that he actually had one of his creations put into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the Yellow Banana. 
A 66 Ford Galaxy that was one of the most disgustingly illegal cars in the history of the sport. Disgusting and got his name illegal. due to its shape and its yellow paint job. But if there was ever a mechanic who could best Junior Johnson in the dark arts of stock car cheating, it was Smokey Eunuch. With a silly name but a penchant for disregarding the rules at every turn, NASCAR fans became enamored with Smokey's antics. He did anything to get a leg up over the competition, making his engines too big, mounting the bodies too far forward on the frame, increasing the size of the fuel tank, and when officials became wary of that, they mandated the size of the fuel tank to 20 gallons. But Smokey then just made the fuel line wrap around the car, which squeezed an extra gallon or two out of the limit set in place. And in one famous example, Smokey had his fuel tank seized by NASCAR tech inspectors, saying that it was too large and he had a total Sorry that I'm not talking, this is just genuinely to fascinating to they me. They pulled the fuel tank out of the car as extra punishment, thinking that Smokey would have to push the car back to the garage. But instead, Smokey just jumped in the car, cranked it up, still with no fuel tank in it, and drove it back to his crew while shouting at the officials, make that 11 things. True to his name, Smokey fogged up the lines between right and wrong. And even to this day, this proud tradition of rule bending is still alive in NASCAR. As recently as 2018, during the Flexgate scandal, Stuart Haas racing cars have manipulated the bracing on the rear window to give way at high speeds to direct more airflow towards the spoiler, an exploit wow. famously found out by NASCAR Reddit. Being as there was no rule in place to break at the time, NASCAR let the wins by Stuart Haas stand, but said that anything of the like found going forward would be dealt with harshly, as teams found out the hard way later. The Stuart Haas team of cars beat the law at the time, but that actually leads to the question, wait, there are teams in NASCAR? Well, yeah, number three, NASCAR is a team sport. One team yeah. owner might expand his stable from one car to include two, three, or even four cars, the maximum mm -hmm. allowable as of right now. Piloted by four different cars, drivers with different crew chiefs who prepare the cars, these teams share information and discoveries, but still Seems prepare their cars one. independently according to the preferences of the drivers. Sometimes this leads to friendly and not so friendly competition in-house, which so may happens. or may not have beneficial effects on the teams. It's all dependent on the chemistry of the people involved. Yep, so the owner absolutely. of the entire operation has to manage his personnel accordingly. Just as important as the team of mechanics are the pit crew members, who service mm -hmm. the car during the actual race. These fearless men plucked from the rosters of professional and collegiate athletic programs, braved the chaos of pit road and changed tires and put new fuel in the car, all while making adjustments and repairs as dozens of other cars Man, and teams are all doing the same look thing how on pit lane. Tire Under ideal conditions, a NASCAR pit crew can change four tires, top off fuel, and make adjustments to the car in less than 14 seconds. And yes, nice. sometimes accidents do occur, and oh, but thanks God. to safety regulations and the skill of other drivers Whew. out there on pit lane, those incidents are few and far between. The pit crew members are the athletes that make the team the best they can be on race day. But what about the guys behind the wheel piloting the race car itself? That gets us to number four, yes, the drivers are athletes. It mm. takes a special type of crazy to hop into a metal coffin wearing a fireproof suit and sling a car around at 200 miles an hour but it also takes an insane amount of physical fitness as well. Temperatures inside the car can reach as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And in this oven, you have to think critically about your next move and have cat-like reflexes, yeah. all while communicating to your crew about how your car is holding up via radio. NASCAR legend Bobby Allison used to prepare for these insane conditions by driving around his home in Hueytown, Alabama in his personal car in the middle of the summer with the windows rolled up, with the heat blasting, and while wearing oh. several jackets. Drivers oh. nowadays take trips to the sauna, have a strict fitness regimen, and diet they have to adhere to in order to stay at peak performance. The man we can thank for this breakthrough is Mark Martin. A man often derided as undersized during his early career, the 5'6 Arkansas native took up weightlifting and high-level fitness programs to make up for it, and found out that the workouts actually made him better equipped to handle the demands of NASCAR racing. That's really interesting and soon after that, nearly everyone followed suit. Even in his 50s and still winning races, Mark was still rocking an 8-pack. Wait, Mark Martin was still winning races in his 50s? Yep, that gets us number five on the list. NASCAR drivers can have incredibly long careers. The average successful NASCAR driver will make his first starts in his early 20s and will retire in his mid to late 40s. Some drivers wow. even go beyond this. In 1992, Harry Gant set the record that still stands today as the oldest driver to ever win a NASCAR race at 52 years old. Mark Martin got close yeah, in 2009 too. at age 50, but no driver has challenged the throne since. And to give you some perspective, if the youngest driver to ever win a race, Joey Logano, who got his first win at the age of 19 in 2009, beat Harry Gant's record, we would have to wait until 2043. Current wow. drivers span all age groups and backgrounds. Joey Logano from Connecticut will turn 30 this year. His teammate Ryan Blaney is 26 and hails from Ohio. And one of the best in the business right now, Kevin Harvick from Bakersfield, California, is 44 and has just signed a multi-year contract extension. Hey, maybe he'll be the one to take Hanson Harry Gant's crown. 
Okay, so we've covered the who, the what, and the why of NASCAR, but as you sit down to watch the race, what should you be keeping your eye on? Yes, there's daring, death-defying moves and beating and banging action happening every so often, but what keeps NASCAR crazy, such as myself, glued to the TV for the entire duration of the race? Number six, it's all about strategy. Most NASCAR races are between four and 500 miles long. And as you probably guessed, you have to stop for tires and fuel along the way. But when yeah. do you do it? Your tires will wear out faster the harder you push them. So do you just take it easy and make up time in the long run? Or do you push it now and end up losing time as the race goes on? You need to make it to the front in order to win, but when and how you do this matters in the grand scheme yeah. of things. Helping That's the driver and the crew work this out and masterminding the whole plan is the crew chief. He oversees yep. the whole operation and decides what adjustments to make to the car according to the driver's inputs over the radio. He also makes suggestions to the driver on how hard to push the envelope. Some drivers like their crew chief to handle the mental heavy lifting. Others prefer to run at their own pace and just let the crew chief worry about adjustments. Either way, pairing the right drivers with the right crew chief is crucial to ending up in victory lane yeah. at the end of the day. But there's one other guy in this conversation that we haven't talked about yet. The spotter. That gets us to number seven. Drivers can't actually see that much inside of their cars. Due to safety regulations, drivers are pretty much bolted into their seats and their head movement is very limited. limited so to help with this, drivers have spotters that communicate with them constantly, telling them where the other cars are out on the track, if there's a wreck up ahead, or what the leader is up to. These crew members, perched high atop the press box, are usually family members of the driver or former drivers themselves, who are handpicked based on their ability to communicate effectively with the driver. On those crazy double file restarts, the information spotters provide is understandably extremely important. In the early days before before radio communications were widely available, lots of fatalities and injuries were caused simply yeah, because drivers course. didn't know what was happening up of ahead. Course, you as you probably expected, any time a car is on the track, it is required by rule that the driver has a spotter up on the spotter stand to give him an extra set of eyes in the sky. Veteran drivers usually only have essential communications with their spotter and crew chief as they can almost read each other's minds. However, newer drivers typically have a lot more radio traffic as the spotter kind of doubles as a cheerleader and guide. And here's the coolest part about all this radio chatter, you can actually listen in. Using various apps on NASCAR.com or by renting a scanner at the track itself, you can pick a driver wow. and listen in on all the back and forth action for yourself. And yes, awesome. sometimes the teams listen in on each other to see what kind of strategies they're cooking up. So don't be surprised <laughs> if they start talking in code. But fair warning, these are grown men in a high-stress environment. Sometimes they say things that aren't exactly PG-rated. So think twice about having your kids join in. Some tracks, though, are so massive that they require multiple spotters in different locations to help out the driver. And that gets us finally to number eight. NASCAR goes to a lot of very different racetracks, and yes, we even make a few right-hand turns. Every driver in the series has to have a mastery of different disciplines in racing. Whether we're talking about the two mile and up super speedways, the half mile short tracks, or the twisting and turning road courses, by the end of the 36 race schedule, every driver will have been put through a gauntlet of demanding venues. Tracks come in all shapes and sizes, and some of the lower divisions, NASCAR's minor leagues, even race on dirt. These circuits dot the U.S. Wow. landscape from major markets like Atlanta and Las Vegas to small towns tucked away in the southeast like Bristol and Martinsville and everywhere in between. There are no away games, so to speak, in NASCAR, but with the vast majority of teams being located in North Carolina, having to pinball across the U.S. is a demanding effort in its own right, as hauler drivers will work around the clock driving a garage on wheels to and from each racetrack during the year. The crews and drivers will fly out to the track a few days before the race and spend hours running practice laps until they're finally happy with the car and move on to qualifying time trials to set the field, where the fastest driver starts at the front, also known yep. as the pole position. Well, that about yep. wraps it all up, eight things you might not have known about NASCAR. Hopefully this video has shed some light on this weird traditionally southern motorsport and given you a greater appreciation of these cars going around in differently shaped circles at unreasonably fast speeds. Definitely. If you want to know more about the types of drivers that make NASCAR what it is, then you can check out my video on the nine types of NASCAR winners here and in the description down below. Also, big shout out to Biodegradable, who edited this video for me while I've been busy at work. You can check him out also down in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. And until next time, y'all take it easy. That was awesome, man. I really should have watched that like maybe about a month or two months ago. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot to unpack. Definitely, there's quite a few similarities between NASCAR and Formula One regarding pole position, qualifying, driver fitness, you know, the, the variety of different tracks that the drivers race on you know the uh, skirting of the rules where possible 
but yeah, NASCAR definitely seems a bit unique in the sense that cheating is almost uh, like was explained encouraged. I need to know more about that because uh, in other, you know, motorsports, like in Formula One, the rules are so ironclad that if there's any deviation from them, severe penalties will occur. Whereas in NASCAR, I think maybe there's a bit more flexibility in that regard. But yeah, that, that video just made me love NASCAR even more. I can't wait to watch more and react to more uh, NASCAR footage, start watching more like live races and hopefully get out to America when we, you know, kick this virus's ass. You know, I definitely want to go and watch some NASCAR races live. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications and keep throwing recommendations my way. I know I say it all the time, but they genuinely help me out because if I know you enjoyed watching something, I'll definitely enjoy reacting to it. So like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, keep throwing recommendations and I'll catch you in the next one.